Welcome to Game Tape with Tony. As always, I am your host, Tony Ferrari, with Elite Prospects. Today, I'm pleased to be joined by Saskatoon Blades forward, Fraser Minton. Here's Minton moving in. Fraser Minton, backhand shot, save, rebound, he scores! Moving in a shot, pat, save, rebound, shot, he scores! How's it going today, Fraser? Going really good. How about yourself? Not too bad. I'm pleased to be joined by it. It's going to be a fun time. Now, your Leafs prospect, every team does it a little bit differently. But how much contact do you have with the Leafs uh, now that you're away from the team playing back in junior? Yeah, they got a, a pretty big development staff that uh, reaches out and keeps in touch with you. Like as far as guys that uh, send you some video with, uh, you know, pointers that, that help out and help keep you accountable to, you know, pushing your game, pushing, um, you know, the habits that they want to see you implement to be able to make that jump at some point to, to professional hockey and, um, also guys that help out with, you know, gym stuff, nutrition stuff, um, giving you tips on how to, you know, make sure you're always getting enough food to keep your energy up or, um, whether that's from like recipes and cooking stuff to like tips on, on stuff to bring on the road with your, with you. And then, uh, you know, workouts to, to do based on your schedule after a game, if you have a couple of days off or whatever. So, uh, a, a good development staff that, that helps, you know, the, the junior guys really, uh, you know, feel connected to the organization and uh, help you continue to improve. Now you played in four NHL games this year. Was there someone that you face off with that you had a little bit of a wow moment or just a little bit in awe of the talent that they had? Yeah, we played, uh, played against lots of good players. I think biggest guy for me was Barkov. He's uh, one of my favorite players to watch. I think he's nasty and, um, facing off against him so big and uh, pretty strong. I think uh, I think he sucked it back pretty fast. So uh, playing against him was pretty cool. Let's jump into some of the game tape I've got for you here. This first clip I've got for you is just a really nice play by you. Watching the back end here, making sure things don't go awry while you're at four and four. And then when things start to go back the other way, you have a great move here on the uh, defender, and then you just jam it in past the goalie. Yeah, I knew uh, I knew we were at the end of a period. This was a uh... A big game. It was uh, the first time we played Med Hat since uh, I'd been in Saskatoon, and they were right up there at the top of the standings. So it was a sick, sick little hit there by Lizzo and uh, freed up the puck. And I saw that it was kind of a one-on-one leaving at the back there, and I had some speed. He was probably flat-footed and expect the puck to get turned over. So just tried to attack as quick as I could, and I uh, was planning on shooting it, and then saw him wave his stick and kind of just tried to pull it around, and then went to the net. Got a got a nice fortunate rebound and just tried to follow up and, and put it home. Now, one of the things that's kind of a hallmark of your game is your work ethic and not quitting on the end of this play is kind of an example of that. What goes into that aspect of your game, just being the hardest worker on the ice just about every time you're out there? Yeah. I mean, I think it just, just gives you a better chance to to help your team, better chance to win. If you're working hard, like there's uh, only so far that, you know, skill can get you and, you have to be absolutely ridiculously skilled to get away with not working hard at this level or um, and it's pretty much impossible at the next. So I think it's just something that, um, you know, when I'm on my game, I'm hunting pucks and, and working as hard as I can. And um, it, does, it doesn't really feel like work. It's just fun out there. All right. This next play, what goes into everything on this play from that initial little four check to getting to the front of the net and getting the tip on? Yeah, this was a, a funny one. You can see at the end there, me and uh, Suze Love, they both hit the exact same celly going the other way. We both actually tipped that in front of the net. And then, uh, so that was pretty funny. But I think just, uh, you know, this is how pretty much a lot of goals are scored at, at professional level, even at WHL level, right? It's just from hard four checks, getting recovering pucks and then throwing stuff to the net and getting there. Um, it's pretty hard against you know good defense to to score off the rush you have to be super fast super skilled and um you don't really get too many odd man so these are the the type of plays that that translate and the the way hockey's played for the majority of people i think uh you know it's it's really hard like i said earlier to to make it as a super skilled guy right like if, and most teams already have these guys that um have this high end skill like i'm not gonna gonna outskill matthews or marner or nylander so um, if I if I want to carve my way into into that lineup at some point, it'll it'll be like you said, based on on work ethic and um, you know playing hard and uh, getting to those areas and and finding ways to 
you know, battle bucks into the net and win battles, disrupt on the four check, work hard defensively, stuff like that. All right, this next clip I have for you here. Team. Power play now ending as Minton cross ice Suzdalev shoots and scores a hat trick for Alexander Suzdalev. Yeah, I think that's just uh just a read there. Um power play spots on that left side of the ice and off the breakout, uh, we come in kind of behind the D there. So if the, the D jumps in, then you're the last guy back. So make sure you're holding. Don't want to give up anything against primarily and then uh, get the opportunity to get the puck down the wall. And then first thought is, you know, how can you get it towards the net and create something? And uh, there I saw an open lane and I uh, tried to make a play and uh, it got through and got to Sue's there, finished it off nicely. Do you consider yourself more of a goal scorer or more of a playmaker? Um, I don't know. I think if you asked me a year or two ago, I would have definitely said more of a playmaker. Um, but I think recently I've been been shooting a lot more, feel more confident with my shots. So uh but it's I'd say a bit of both at, at this current point in uh in my play. All right, this next shift here I've got for you. The line left wing gets a return feed from Armstrong, hooks it in front, and it didn't get to Lazowski as the Pats read that. Minton knocks down his man, Moore, has it along the near boards. So Lizowski in the middle, shoots and scores! Oh my, what a shot! Hua! Three. It shows off some of that work ethic that you have. Uh, your your motor kind of never stops going. You guys get into the offensive zone here, but they get the puck back. And then you're just right on the pursuit there. Bump the guy off the puck, take it and make a nice little pass to the slot here. That relentless motor, like you said, is going to get you to the NHL level. That's going to be kind of your calling card how do you take that part of your game to the next level as you do play against bigger, faster, stronger players? Yeah, I think that's uh part of the game where you just, I mean, maybe a play like that right there where I throw it to the front is one you can't make, you know, you're not going to always be able to, to get back on top of a guy at the next level and get above him. So uh, maybe just a smarter decision making with the puck there. And uh, like you said, as you get bigger, older, those crossovers will get, get faster. You'll get stronger. And, um more able to create time and space separation and um yeah i think just like with with time and, and practice you'll you'll improve slightly at that like if you watch from me doing that a couple of years ago it won't look as as clean as that so just continue to, to steadily progress in in those skills in those areas and you know hopefully be able to translate you know transitioning pucks from neutral zone d zone to the offensive zone and, and working hard to get them back and create now, what's an area of your game that you really want to improve on as you look to make the pro level up next year? I think uh, like I've got a bit of a delay and sometimes in my game, like in my pace with when I pick up a puck or, or receive a pass, like gliding and kind of looking around to to read the ice. I think like scanning the ice prior to, to receiving pucks and knowing what I'm going to do as I receive it rather than getting it, then deciding what to do, just being a, being a little quicker with um, my decision making with the puck, like moving my feet as well as you know my hands and and brain all at once, rather than kind of doing that in a, a step to step process, which is has worked so far. But you know, there's real really no time at the the higher levels there. So, oh, sorry about that. No and uh, just continue to to put those pieces together and uh, be able to to play faster. Like the the rink gets smaller and it speeds up, so continue to to be able to move quicker and think quicker. All right. We talked about your defensive game a little bit, and this clip does a good job of showing showcasing that you do a really good job of kind of tracking back in the play, supporting your defenseman in the corner here, and then eventually making the play to get the puck out of the corner and start moving the play up by absorbing a hit here. What goes into a play like this? Cause you get down to the other end of the ice and you're able to make a play and, and get into the offensive game as well. Yeah, like I said, I think like that's going to be something as a center that, um, you know, allows me to to play pro hockey is being able to transition pucks from uh, defensive zone to to getting into offense as quick as you can get up the ice. Like you watch guys like um, like McKinnon, he's so good at supporting low and then just absolutely sprinting up ice, beating guys and creating odd man rushes as a result. And so I think that's that's what I was trying to do there, just beat a guy up the ice and support my wingers, um, get it to towards the net, create some havoc and create rebounds. And um, that's how you score goals. So uh, yeah, like just having, having a responsible stick and positioning in the defensive zone and then trying to get up ice quick as you can to, 
to join your uh, your other forwards there and and uh, get on offense. Then. Now we see at the end of this shift, do you make a really nice play in the offensive zone by shooting it off the goalie's pads? Is that kind of a play you're trying to make to create that havoc you were talking about, or is that just trying to get a low shot and worst case scenario you get a rebound? Yeah, that one actually I was looking for uh for a five hole, but I, I love shooting five hole. It either uh finds a way through or or like you said, it throws a, a rebound out there. So um yeah, definitely was my thought in that situation was to to throw it low, but um goal or, or rebound works perfect. Now, when you were going through the draft process, you were interviewed by a bunch of NHL teams. When they asked you why should we draft you, what was your answer to that? Um can't quite remember exactly what i would have said but um i think i just honestly told them like i'm i'm self-motivated like i'm gonna gonna get there because i want it um passionate about it and uh, i would tell them that i think like my game translates really well to the next level there's uh, maybe other guys who have more talent or or more skill but uh, like i said earlier it's not always what what gets you to the next level it's it's work ethic and continued improvement and um, I think like I, one of my strengths is, is knowing my game and uh, knowing who I am as a player and, and uh, working hard at, at my game to continue to, to progress. And um, like, I would just tell them that I'm, I'm confident in myself and uh, there's no real reason why, why you guys shouldn't be too. All right. Now let's get to know you a little bit off of the ice with some personality type questions. Uh, let's start with this. If you could have any superpower, which one would it be? Um, I think having like, uh, like some, I don't know, maybe like some, some Hulk strength wouldn't hurt and you can kind of do whatever you want with that. That's uh, that's a fair answer answer there. Too many. All right. What was the, your favorite Christmas or birthday gift you got as a kid? Uh, favorite Christmas gift. Um, I got a Easton, uh, RS, stealth stick that was kind of like my first uh composite stick before that i'd had the the wooden twigs going and that was one that i i really wanted i thought it looked sick and i got it and and loved it so uh, i remember that one that one stands out for sure it's one of my favorite gifts as a kid now i know we're we're both athletes here trying to make it to the next level and we have our nutrition on point but what's your favorite cheat meal um cheat meal i I don't know. I love like I'm a big fan of like muffins, like bakery food or like a scone or like a fresh cookie, like anything from bakeries. It's got, you know, lots of sugar and stuff, but I really love bakery food. So a good bakery would be a, a cheat meal for me. All right. What kind of music are you listening to? What's on your playlist? Uh, I love country music. That's my favorite genre. So uh, lots of Luke Combs or, or Morgan Wall and Zach Bryan, that kind of stuff. And uh, some of the guys here in Saskatoon, like some of the older, older countries. So I've been listening to a bit of that recently too. All right. Before we get out of here, do you have a TV show or a movie recommendation? Something you really like watching? I love uh goodwill hunting. That's my go-to movie. That's my favorite one. And uh, watching game of Thrones right now too. And uh, on like season six. So I've been working through that quite a bit this year. And uh, I love that too. I think it's pretty cool. Well, as uh, anyone else who's watched Game of Thrones, you're at a good point because uh, the end is not quite as satisfying as the rest of the show, unfortunately. Yeah, I've heard. I've heard the end's not the best, but it's it's awesome so far. All right, Frazier, I really appreciate you doing this. This is a lot of fun. Thanks a lot, buddy. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you.